these wheels are far too hard to turn. Hello, welcome to the video. The subject of which is this 2007 Ford Ranger. It's a 2.5 TDCI double cab four wheel drive. I'm just doing a pre MOT inspection and these wheels are far too hard to turn. And on a vehicle that isn't used very much, that tells me that we're probably due a brake service. So that's what I'm gonna to do today. Thought I'd bring you along. Okay, now we can see what we're doing, but we're gonna make life even easier for ourselves by turning the steering. I've already undone the steering lock, so this is quite easy. You can do it from this side. There we go, that's at the stop. So now we can get to all of the bolts and bits and pieces that we need to. The reason that this happens most commonly is because you have rust forming between the pad carrier and the edge of the pads. So the rust basically compresses the pads into position and means that they can't slide in and out. And because they can't slide in and out, they stay very close to the disc and so stop it rotating as freely. So 12 millimeter, 14 millimeter and 19 millimeter sockets are what you need for this job. What I was doing there was just backing the caliper off, uh, or so levering the caliper against the disc to push the pistons back in a little bit so that it's loose so that I can slide it off easily and also slide it back on again when we're done. Hang that out of the way like that. I suppose it would be a good idea to check for any leaking as we go. And there isn't any. Okay, so the outboard pad, you can probably tell, is moving quite freely there. But the inboard is completely stuck. We'll take that one out now and probably see some rust on the on the inside there, although we'll, we'll see more, oh sorry, on the on the ear of the pad there, we'll see more on, on the pad carrier and the hardware there. Right. Always happens when you're making a video, the compressor has to kick in just in the middle of things. Okay, I've taken the lower pad carrier bolt off. These are tight. 
the I think the talk settings. Well, I'll tell you when I'm doing it back, putting it back together. Actually, then I'll make sure I get it right. Um, I can't find a way of getting my impact in for the upper one. There's a little bracket that holds the brake hose and the ABS wire in place. It's a 12 millimeter and it's just in here. I'm afraid it's going to be quite difficult for me to get the camera in to show you. And it will also be quite dark if I could, but anyway, it's in here. And I'm pleasantly surprised that that undid because I was expecting it to be a bit of a battle. And it's also uh, got a little sort of tag on it that that goes into the wheel bearing carrier, the hub carrier. So it may well be a little bit stuck in. So we'll just give it some gentle encouragement. And there it goes. Are you able to see that? That's what I mean. So that little tab is all rusted in. So I just clean that up with a wire brush and put some copper grease on before I put it back. That gives a bit more space to get to this top one, but it's still going to need to be with, uh, with a breaker bar rather than with the impact. There we go. It was good that we were able to take that outer pad out because that meant that we could slide this off. If both pads were stuck in place, you probably need to sort of just gently knock them out slightly, only on the metal, obviously not on the braking material, uh, just to try and actually get them out of, the, uh, out of the way so that you could slide this off. There isn't much of a lip on these discs at all. In fact, you can hardly feel one. So the discs are fine. But nonetheless, that would have made it more difficult to take the uh, take the pads uh, take the pad carrier off. While well, I've got this out, then just check the sliders. These can get seized, and that can also be a cause of the brakes sticking on. But these are absolutely fine. In fact, they're so good, I'm very tempted. In fact, I will be just leaving them completely alone because when you open this up, take that boot out, you risk getting muck in there. Even if you're taking it off to clean it out, if they're fine, leave them alone. That is my view. That pad. I should be able to push it out, but it is absolutely stuck. So that is going to need some, um, well, it's going to need some hammering, I'm afraid. Let's go over to the vise. So it'd be easier to hammer these inwards than outwards. There we go. They've escaped relatively unscathed. I'll just put these back on loosely for now so I can remember where they went and then we'll, we'll clean them up and put them back on properly. So you can probably see already the rust on these. I can get the hardware out now. Uh, 
that's one. You can see now all the rust underneath, that's what I was talking about. Let's have a look at that pad actually, yeah. Plenty of rust, don't know how well you can see that on the, on the pad as well. Loads of rust there, particularly on the on the inside. Now we can start cleaning this up. I usually do like a, a several stage process involving washing as much of the brake dust off as I can first with some brake cleaner. I'm running the drill in reverse there so if it slips it doesn't slip into the rubber uh, so we don't create a whole new set of work for ourselves. And then I usually use a file. Now if you're using a file go easy with it. You're not intending to take away the original metal, you're just taking away or trying to take away the rust. I know technically you are taking away the original metal when you're taking away the rust because it was the original metal that rusted. But what you're not trying to do is widen this gap so that the pads are loose. And the main surface on which the pads sit is this one. So that's the area to concentrate on. I'm trying to use the least aggressive file possible. And I'm not pressing particularly hard. I upgraded my gloves for this bit because the wire brush is basically going against my fingers. These don't have to be spotless. Really focusing on the bits where the pads touch. Okay, let's move on to the pads. These look really clean behind there actually, so I think I'm just going to put those back together as they are before I do. I'm going to pay very close attention to these bits, the bits that we talked about before. 
where the pad contacts with the pad carrier and where it can therefore get rusted into place. There's rust on there. I'll just give these a very gentle tickle up with the file. You can see the surface isn't particularly smooth. What I'm trying to do is just clean it up without taking too much material away. Sometimes you can do that with a wire brush, but sometimes I find the wire brush kind of removes the dust off the top, but it then kind of sort of polishes the rust rather than actually taking the rust off. See that side's cleaned up much better. If there's a load of rust under here you can clean it, put some brake lubricant on there, put them back in place. In my view, the most that this needs is a quick wipe over of the backing plate. You're not going to get it clean, but you do need it to be smooth, and I can feel that this one is smooth. Let's have a look at the other side. Again, pad looks fine. They're quite worn, but they're, they're worn evenly, and they're nowhere near down to the worn to the point where they need replacing. They're quite happy for these to go back on. That's brake cleaner by the way and that spray bottle. I don't think I said I, I'm uh, not sure whether it's obvious or not but anyway if it wasn't apologies that's brake cleaner. Okay time to start reassembling everything. variety of different brake lubricant options, plasti lube, ceramic brake paste and of course the good old copper slip. My, uh, my current favourite is the ceramic lubricant but no hard and fast rules on this I don't think. So I'm putting a little bit underneath the brake hardware, the uh, the caliper mounting, the, the caliper, the pad mounting springs. And the reason for that is to try and disrupt any further rust forming. Before I put any lubricant on these, let's check that they can slide okay. They both fit absolutely fine, a snug fit, but they do slide and that's even without any lubricant on there, so when there is some lubricant on there that'll be even better. Okay, so now just applying a little bit more. and assemble the pads into the carrier before we go and put it back on. There we 
go. So just a few things to do before putting it back together. First thing I said I was going to do was just clean this little pin here. Clean the rust off it. Next thing I usually do with the caliper is just very gently take the rust off the piston surface, being careful not to put your wire brush into the seals. And just give the outer surfaces a clean. And then a little bit of copper grease surfaces okay that's ready to go Oh, I'm making a meal of this, aren't I? That is because I'm trying to make sure, dear viewer, that you can still see what I'm doing. But now I've just put my arm in the way. But that's at least got the bolt in. Saves you the pain of watching me trying to get it in the right place. Right, there's a range of uh, torque setting or a torque range for these bolts. Um, I can't remember what the range is, but I'm doing them to 110 Newton meters, which I'm pretty sure is about in the middle of the range. Okay, squidge the pads in against the disc. Refit the caliper. I'm holding that side just to stop this twisting because there's flats on here. There's flats on these and they mate up against the caliper. So you need to pull that out of where it naturally wants to sit. Where in this case, if your pads are a bit worn, you do anyway, uh, and hold it in place while you're putting the bolts on. 32 Newton meters for these ones. And then lastly, refit the little bracket. I'm going to give that pin a good coating of anti-seize just so it's a bit easier to get out if I need to take it out again.
Okay, that's the brake service pretty much done. Apart from obviously taking it for a test drive, but we're not quite ready for that yet. So you'll have to uh, you'll have to take my word for it that it drives fine. Um, the last thing to do. This caliper's still a bit loose there, so just go and put your foot on the brake to seat the piston back in place. Pistons back in place, sorry, there are two of them on this. Right, that's it. That's a brake service on a Mark III Ford Ranger, or at least a front brake service, or at least half a front brake service, because of course you've got the other side to do. I'm going to crack on and do that now. Thanks very much for joining me. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, so you don't miss any new content that I publish. For now, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.